All right, good to have you guys on here again. Um, as I'll put on the title, I just want to go over a couple parables, and we're going to see the symbolism in the parables, and then later we're going to be able to apply this to a bigger picture, to prophecy, because when you see prophecy, it's really neat, because it just it repeats itself, and it repeats itself, and the picture gets bigger and bigger, and so that's the uh, intention. You go to school, you know, in first grade you learn one plus one, and later you learn your division, and then later you're, you do your algebra, and then your, you know, trigonometry. What I'm saying is that, that there's, there's building blocks, and first we need to see the very broad picture, and then we'll start to see more and, and, and fill those little spots in. And so that's kind of what the Bible does. <clears throat> Um, all right, so let's just get into it. I'm going to read the parable of the ten virgins, Matthew chapter 25. Okay. First, I'll read it just one time through, and then we'll read it and put in the symbolism. And I'll kind of, uh, I'll show you how we find the symbolism. Okay. My intention here is to make, to give you guys tools so that when you read the Bible, you don't need anyone else to interpret it for you. Okay the symbols, the parallelism in the Bible is always consistent and it doesn't change. So once you learn the, you know, these little, you know, tricks, I guess you could say, you can start doing it for yourself. Okay, it's really, it's, it's pretty simple. So again, let's start in Matthew 25, uh, verse 1. I'm going to read it once all the way through, okay? Just think about this parable that Christ is saying to his disciples. And then we'll um, then we'll break it down. Okay, he says, verse one: Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins, which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise, and five were foolish. They that were foolish they took their lamps, but they took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps, while the bridegroom tarried. Right, as, his, as he delayed, they all slumbered and slept. And at midnight, there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us your oil, our lamps are going out. But the wise said, Not so, lest there not be enough for us and you, but go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. While they, the foolish, went to buy, the bridegroom came. And they that were ready, the wise, went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Afterward came also the other virgins, saying, Lord, open to us. So the, the foolish virgins here, saying, Lord, open the door. <clears throat> but he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I don't know you. So the lesson of this is, Therefore, keep watch, for you do not know the hour that the Son of Man comes. So, obviously, here it's talking about the Son of Man, his second coming. Okay. Now we're going to read it, and we'll, we'll um, look at the symbolism behind it. And then we'll maybe read another story, and we'll see that the symbolism doesn't change. Okay, we can apply this to any story in the Bible. So, back to verse 1. It says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Well, I recommend that you have your own Bible, okay, and get a pen and write in your Bible. Get a fine pen, you know, just to make it neat. But you need to mark this thing up. I mean, that's the only thing, that's the only way that you're going to learn, okay. But it says, then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins. Well, the word then, we're not going to understand this now, and we're not going to understand this in the next video. Um, but it will come into play in the future. But here it's a continuation of time, right? Because then indicates that it's referring to what is spoken about before this. And so that's important to take note of. Um, so just underline the word then. Right now you're not going to understand it. But in the future, we'll come back to this. And I mean far in the future. But just keep it in mind. So as the kingdom is likened unto ten virgins. It's interesting that the word, or the number, I should say, ten, in the Bible is um, universality. Okay, and what I mean by that is, um, 
some of us know the Bible, some of us don't, okay? For those that have, and this is not a denominational way of thinking, this is actually something that's been understood for hundreds of years. I mean, since I have um, records from the 1500s that say that they knew this, and I'm sure beforehand, beforehand as well. But in Daniel chapter 2, there's a statue. And what the statue is, it's a timeline, okay? Starting from at the head, which was then, coming down to the end of time, the toes. And so at the end, you have the ten toes, okay? Well, again, ten is universality. It's the whole world. You have the ten sons of Haman. Now, that's a little bit more complicated. Um, but in the book of Esther, which is a very, very prophetic book, Everything in there is just is symbolic for something. Um, again, it's universality. You have the ten tribes of Israel that were lost. Okay, universality. Um, and the list goes on. So ten is a symbol of that which is universal. Okay, and so we, here we have ten virgins. Okay, well, um, what is a virgin? Okay, this again, this is a very important word to know in the Bible. Here we'll go to, let me go in here, and this is a tool that I'd like you guys to use. So if we go to Google and type up Bible symbols, go to amazing facts. <clears throat> here they have, as you can see, a Bible symbols chart. And this is really cool because we can see that, you know, you know blood, for example, is a symbol for, you know, as if, if the word is said in the Bible right here, blood, then the meaning is life. And these are the areas in the Bible that give, you know, that highlight even further that that's the definition. Okay. Um, and so what are we going? We're going over virgins. What is a virgin? Now, a virgin is not in here, but what is a virgin? It's a woman. So here we can go to here, a pure woman. And we see that it's a, a church or a believer. Okay. And we'll, we'll talk about this more. But if you go to these verses right here, you'll see that that's exactly what it says. Let's read one of them. Um, that's a good one to start with. I guess 2 Corinthians 11.2. So if I go to 2 Corinthians 11.2, it says here, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. Um, so again, here we have this symbology, this symbolism, where, you know, Christ is, we are, we as a body, as a, as a body of believers, as the church, are supposed to be united with Christ. And here we are likened to a virgin, okay? That's one example. Uh, another one here, Ephesians, I know, chapter 5, let me just quickly go to it. And some of these smaller books are harder, especially when I'm using my little small Bible. 5.23. And so in verse 23, it says, For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the savior of the body. Okay, and if I skip down to verse 27, because it's 23 through 27, that he, Christ, may present it to him, okay, I haven't read the context, that he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing. Again, so we have a, a parallel here of Christ and the church, okay, a man and a virgin. So this was said in, you know, 2 Corinthians, and here it's said in Ephesians. So again, this is repeated over and over again. But let's just continue, and the more that we read stories, you'll, the more you'll see that this is the case. Um, sorry about the dog. He's, he's, um, let me close that window, actually. <clears throat> All right, so, <clears throat> the kingdom of heaven will be likened unto ten virgins. Okay, so if ten is universality and virgins are believers, it's believers across the, uh, across, across the globe, okay, across the world. So all of the believers, they took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Well, we can already deduct that the bridegroom here is Christ. Okay, it says it. I don't even have to explain it. 
and it, go on here too. Um, go on to this Bible symbols chart, and you'll see here that it doesn't say bridegroom. But what you could do is just go into Google and type in, um, let's see, bridegroom um, Bible verses. You can type in the meaning. Um, here we go. This is, uh, as you can see, openbible.info. Um, it has all of just verses that where it mentions bridegroom or the context is whatever word you want to put here in this in this finder right here. Um, and so here, John the Baptist, this is the book of John, which is not John the Baptist, it's a, as a different John. But here John is speaking of, about John the Baptist and John the Baptist is referring to Christ as the bridegroom. Okay. Anyway, so these 10 virgins, okay, uni universal church, people, believers across the, across the globe, they go to meet the bridegroom and they take their lamps. This is their lamp, okay? The Bible is the lamp and I'll show you, I'll give a verse, okay? I don't have it up, but Psalm 119, 105, it's a well-known verse where it says that your lamp is a light to my feet. Excuse me, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Okay, again, your word, the word of God, is a lamp to my feet. So, again, here we have the Bible saying that the word of God is a lamp. Um... And so all of these believers worldwide, they all have the word of God. Okay. But verse 2 says that five of them were wise and five were foolish. So half, it's saying, were wise and half were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps, but took no oil with them. Okay, well, the foolish, they had their Bibles, but they didn't have any oil. We'll go here to this... Um, Bible symbols chart, if you go down to oil, it should have it here because that's a very, just a very, there we go. So oil is the Spirit of God or the Holy Spirit. Zechariah chapter 4 is probably the best spot to read that. Um, but again, if you don't want to go there, you can just go into Google and you can look it up. But here, let's look into this, in this website. And you could read through here just, and you can see that the context of oil is the Spirit of God. I have my nephew here, so he's don't mind if he bangs on the door. Sometimes he likes to come say hi. Um, so the foolish, they had their lamps, but they didn't have oil. They had their Bibles, but they didn't have the Spirit of God. Okay. Now you cannot under discern this without God revealing it, revealing it to you. Okay. You have a lot of famous people throughout the world that try to attack the Bible. Richard Dawkins being an easy example, who is an, a devout atheist, and it's his, it's his mission to do away with religion. Um, and unfortunately, you know, of course, he thinks that he's doing what's right. We all think we're doing the right thing, but we deceive ourselves. The more that we read that, the, this book, the more that we'll see that we really do deceive ourselves. <clears throat> and um, it says, but verse 4, that the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps, okay? It's interesting that they didn't have oil in their lamps, right? That would make sense, but that's not what it says. It says that they took oil in their vessels with their lamps. Well, again, the lamp is the Bible. Oil is the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God wasn't in their Bible. The Spirit of God was in them, okay? Jesus says that we are likened to earthen vessels. Um, what else? Um, he compares us to uh, wineskins. You know, you cannot have um, old teachings in new vessels. Okay, when you have a new teaching, it has to be a new vessel. It's like you have to be reborn. I don't want to get too complicated. Um, <clears throat> but here I just typed up vessels in this. I haven't. I don't really use this one, to be honest. I just, I just happened to click on it, and I thought that anything does. If you can just look at verses and start reading and putting things together for yourself, um, then, you know, that's, <clears throat> that's how we learn. The book of Isaiah, the book of Jeremiah, they liken us to um, being the, the potter's clay, okay? Isaiah, you know, says, But now, o, Lo o Lord, you are our father, we are the clay, 
and you are the potter. We are all the work of your hand. Again, that's, that's Isaiah. That's also said in Jeremiah. So the wise, they had oil in their vessels with their lamp. Okay? They had the Spirit of God within them, and they were looking through the Word of God, discerning the Bible. Um, verse 5. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Okay. Well, we know that the bridegroom is Christ. So here Christ, he tarries, meaning that he's, you know, it's like today. People, are, are, people think that Christ should have come by now. And that's why there's a lot of mockers, a lot of people criticizing uh, those that believe that Christ is coming soon. Um, we're going to see this parallel over and over again, that Christ delays his coming. Um, I'm just trying to think of any examples that would just be, you know, quick to, um, I'm not going to go into it because I know that there's some verses after this that maybe will take us into that direction. So here the bridegroom tarries. Christ is tarrying. He's wanting to hold back as long as he can to save as many people as he can. Um, <clears throat> but they all slumbered and slept. Now that's interesting. All slumbered and slept. All the wise and the foolish, they all fell asleep. Which is interesting because if the wise fell asleep, when do they wake up? Okay. And there's an answer to that, but I don't want to go into it right now because um, that's a whole other subject. When do they wake up? Really, they wake up at the darkest hour. We're going to kind of see that in a little bit. Um, but um, when the crisis comes, those that are that have oil in their vessels are going to be the ones that can, that can, you know, their light will shine through the darkness, through the darkest hour. Does that make sense? Okay. And you'll see what I mean. Okay. The Bible says spiritual things are spiritually understood. So we have to look at this spiritually, grab the spiritual context and put it together. So, um, they all slept, verse six, and at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, go out to meet him. Okay, so midnight, again, the darkest hour, the cry was made, the bridegroom cometh. So when the crisis comes, that's when those that know this book, they know that Christ is coming soon. Okay, and believe me, they, just like it says that they have oil in their vessel, they shine. And I hope that I shine. I hope that what I mean by shining is that I, I hope it's, I, I think that I will, you know, it, it'll be like, um, a, like a, a paradox. I'll be sad for the crisis because it would just be, uh, it would be a major hardship on people. But there's that hope in you that Christ is coming soon. Um, so at midnight, the cry is made, behold, the bridegroom cometh, go out to meet him. Verse seven, then all those virgins, all 10, trimmed, they arose and trimmed their lamps. So what does it mean to trim your lamp? So if you're, the Bible is your lamp. What does it mean to trim the lamp? Believe me, when the crisis comes, people are going to be trying to scroll through here, trying to discern, trying to understand what's going on. Because it'll just, they won't understand, it'll blow their mind. They're like, this is, something's going to happen. Okay, and we'll learn about that more in prophecy. That will just, again, turn a lot of people's heads upside down. They won't even, they won't know up from down. Those that are wise will understand it. Those that are not wise, the foolish versions, they're not going to understand it. And so it says here that all of them trimmed their lamps. Verse 8, And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. Can you give someone else your experience? You only you know, obtain the Spirit of God by yourself. No one else can give it to you. That's, that makes sense. Um, you have to build that relationship, okay? And so when this crisis comes, when people come to someone and say, our, la our, our lamps have gone out, I don't understand this. I need, tell me what it is. We're not going to, okay, it's a little bit more complicated than that, but there's going to be a point at which, you know, those that have made their decision have made their decision, okay? And they've, 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 grieved or they've pushed off God's spirit long enough. And this is talking about believers and believers. The Bible never talks about believers and non-believers, okay? It doesn't, it doesn't really just, that's another thing I don't want to go into. Um, 
Okay, we'll go into that in the future. Um, so their lamps are gone, gone out. In other words, they can't understand what they're reading. Verse nine. But the wise answered, saying, "Not so. We can't give you oil, for there, lest there not be enough for us and you. But go you rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves." Well, the only only other place in the Bible that I can think of where there's buying and selling, okay, some of you might know, is the Mark of the Beast crisis in Revelation chapter thirteen where those that buy and sell are those that receive the mark of the beast, okay? I don't believe it's a chip, a barcode, any of that crazy stuff, okay? Um, we'll talk about that in the future, and I think it's very um, sensical, okay, if we are to go over that. Um, let me turn this off really quick, because my battery is low on my computer. <clears throat> um, so where am I? So here's the, you know, go out and buy for yourself. Well, that's, a, again, a parallel to uh, Revelation chapter 13, verse 17, where here it says, well, I don't want to read the whole thing because I don't want to go off topic, but here it's talking about the mark of the beast crisis and how it says that no man might buy or sell save he that has the mark or the name of the beast or the number of his name. Okay, we'll talk about that in the future. So again, here is buying and selling. Okay. So verse 10, while they went to buy, so while they were, went out to buy, the bridegroom came. There's a lot here. So what are they going to buy? Remember what it said? Oil. They're going to go buy the Spirit. Can you buy the Spirit of God? You can't buy the Spirit of God. That's actually paralleled in the story of uh, Simon Magus in the book of Acts, where he wanted to buy the power of the Spirit, which you can't do. Okay. That's a whole nother topic. All these topics go into so many. I mean, because this is history. You could talk about a lot of things. Um, <clears throat> and so here they're going out to buy oil. But if you think about it, it's a counterfeit oil. If they're trying to buy the Spirit of God, or if they're trying to obtain the Spirit of God in a way that is... that in a way that God does not ask, <clears throat> whose spirit are they going to receive? Okay. I know this is a hard saying, but they're going to receive the spirit of the enemy, of Satan. Satan means enemy in Hebrew, so don't think that some... So it just means enemy. They're going to receive the spirit of the enemy, which makes sense, because again, when we, in the future, when we re read Revelation chapter 13, where it talked about buying and selling, it talks about... People that receive a false spirit, the spirit of Satan. They think that they're receiving the spirit of God. They think that it's a good spirit, but really it's not. It's a counterfeit. Um, I know that these are some big things to chew on, um, but just bear with me and we'll go over, we'll read it more in the future and you can see for yourself what I'm talking about. So, um, while they went out, so verse 10, while they went out to buy the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage, and the door was shut. Okay. This is another a parallel. You know, the door was shut. Probation closed. You can think of, you know, when Noah entered the ark with his family, the door shut, okay, but it didn't start raining. It didn't rain for another week. And so everyone, while the door was shut, they still lived their life. They went on their way, and they didn't they didn't, they made fun of Noah and his family being in the ark and the boat was sealed. That was it. They were in. Um, and by faith, they had to wait in there. Um, and so just like the times of the Bible, the Bible says, just as in the days of Noah, so shall too the coming of the son of man be for people will be eating and drinking and giving in marriage. People will living, be living their life and they won't discern what's going on. Okay. Um, so don't wait for the door to be closed because the door closes when you don't know it. Okay, the door closes and then the crisis hits. Then the rain comes. So you want to get in the ship, spiritually speaking, before the rain comes, before the door shuts. Okay, you don't want to be the foolish virgin. You want to be, you want to have God's spirit, and that's something that you can only obtain by experience. <clears throat> so. <clears throat> 
So the door was shut. Okay. I'm wondering if I should go. I'm going to. Amos 8, 11. I mean, you can see a parallel here, for example. There's a lot of them, but I don't want to read too many of them. If we go to Amos 8, 11, here it talks about a time that it says, you know, behold, the days come, saith the Lord God, that I will send a famine in the land, not a famine of bread, nor of nor a thirst for water, but of hearing the words of the Lord. Remember it said that people will go trimming their lamps, okay? and there's going to be some that don't understand the lamp, the Bible, the word of God. Okay? Well, here it is. The famine is going to come, and they're going to go searching for the word of God, and they're not going to find it, or they're not going to understand it. And they shall wander from sea to sea, and from north even to the east. They shall run to and fro to seek the word of the Lord, and shall not find it. Verse 13. In that day shall the fair virgins and the young men faint for thirst. Again, alluding to the fair virgins. Just as here we're talking about in Matthew 25, the fair virgins. So back to Matthew 25, and we'll continue in verse 11. Afterward came also the other virgins. So now come the foolish virgins, saying, Lord, open to us. But he answered and said, Verily I say to you, I don't know you. Okay. That's a parallel to think of when Jesus was, you know, the Sermon on the Mount, when Jesus says, Many will come to me in that day, saying, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name and cast out demons and perform many miracles? He says, I will tell them plainly, plainly I do not know you. Away from me you who practice lawlessness or iniquity, depending on the translation. Both means the same thing, essentially. Um, but my point being is that, you know, that these are people that, in their mind, they think that they're serving God. Okay. Um, and again, we'll, we'll see more parallels with this in the future. So, obviously, the lesson here is, verse 13, Therefore, keep watch, for you do not, do not know the hour that the Son of Man shall come. So, here in this parable, we've, um, we've been able to grab a couple words. And I've, we could, again, just look them up yourself in Google. But um, you can look further into what these words symbolize. So, when you see the word um, virgin, it's always a believer. When you see ten... Think of universality. Okay. Not always. You have to think of the context. You have to read it for yourself. It's not always a parable. The bridegroom is Christ. Always, when you read that in scripture. Lamp is the word of God. Oil is the spirit of God. Vessels. We are v vessels. Um, whenever, it's, whenever something tarries, the bridegroom tarried. Okay, you should, your ears should try to understand what it's talking about. Um because that's, that's repeated throughout stories in the scriptures. Some just came to mind. Um, <clears throat> what else? That's pretty much all the symbols in this story, right? Here you have the buying and selling, which is a parallel to the buying and selling of Revelation 13, the mark of the beast crisis. The marriage, okay? The marriage is always um, referring to the second coming. And that one gets a little bigger, but we'll talk about that in the future. Midnight. Midnight is the when the crisis hits. You know, think about um, in the book of Exodus. At midnight is when the angel came to to slay the firstborn that did not have the blood on the lintel that were not did not that did not acknowledge God. Okay, the warning was given, and those that did not listen, they perished. Okay. So <clears throat> I think we did a decent job on that one. Um, Man, I just, I don't want to overdo it. I can, there's so many stories in the Bible. Um, and I just want to make these short, is what it is. Um, I think that's a good place to stop. I have other stories in mind, but um, we can do that another time. Please continue to watch, because I intend to go over more stories. And let's go over a good, you know, five stories or so. After we go over these five stories, then we're going to start to read prophecy, and we're going to really look at what's happening now. We're going to look at timelines that point to today, okay? And it will build confidence in the scriptures. Um, 
That's all I'm going to say, I guess. All right. Have a good rest of the morning. It's the morning for me. And um, I'll see you guys soon. All right, bye.